Hello everybody, uh, we just got some more questions for um, a color piece where we don't use any outlines. Uh, we found a really good friend of ours, Alfred Newman, everybody knows him. Uh, had a joy to do this tattoo in Austria and a friend of ours uh, by the tattoo convention in Graz um, about a month ago. So I wanted to show you something and explain this a little bit, how I built this piece up. There's um, exclusively no black lines at all besides on the the eyes only here. How I worked this piece, I used some little lining black there, seven liner, nine round, 15 curved magnum. That's all I used, nothing else. Most of the work is done with the 15 magnum. The tattoo is approximately, I would say six inches in this size in rail and uh, we just blew it up so you can see a little bit better. Uh, sometimes it's really good if you blow up a tattoo and you have a chance to can print it out that big then you can see your flaws, you can see all your faults in it, you can see where you didn't get too close to the lines or where you like we're going a lot of black lines a little bit so sometimes if you have a choice to do that go home and do it it's really really helpful. Um, I started out I used a regular stencil like you would use for a portrait just regular hand drawn not machine made so I get familiar with the design put it on the skin and then what I did is Instead of doing line works, I started right away to shade with it. Uh, what I used is, I used a blood red to start with it. It's a, it's a, it's a bluish red, it's really deep and I used some mixing so solution with it, color mixing so solution to get almost like a shading effect instead of having that strong solid color constantly. And I start to work the skin like a little bit like a feather, just touch it very surfacey and feel your way out, you know, and be very careful when you wipe it off. And then I started shading around here a little bit and bring it in came around here and left that line. Um, uh, in the older days we always were going that you go from the darkest color to the lightest. Um, we made some changes along the way about 10 years ago. We would just uh, went in and said like, okay, who says that? Nobody told me ever personally, so I just like reversed it. And we said like, okay, we put the light color first and then we shaded the dark color on top of it. Uh, for the darker color, you have to mix it with a mixing so so solution to make the color more translucent. And you have to be very feathery. You can't work it in. You can't hit the skin twice down to your tube. So you have to fade it, like really just feather it on top of it. So almost you want to tickle somebody. And then uh, you shade it on top of it. What it does for you is um, it's always more difficult to leave the room what you need for the highlight instead of having the highlight already in it and then just make the darker shades on top so you can play with it. Very, very, very helpful. Um, if you get, it takes a little planning, but it's very helpful. Same part here, uh, we started to come in here, we were shading around, we used some coral, come in here, over here, some cream sickle in there, we made a little line under here, usually people make a black line in here. Um, we used a bright red to make the line underneath the nose. And then uh, also here started to shade out the bright red again. We mix it around with creamsicle a little bit to get that orangey look to it. Um, when we came up here to the lighter colors, we were using some bright sunshine to it. Also here you see there's a little yellow in here. And then uh, started to go in over, use some sweet candy. And uh, again some, some creamsicle and then we used some white to shade it out. All those elements we see here have been done in this way. Uh, it's a new technology, a lot of people use it, Nico, uh, uh, Mike Therese, Mike Damasi. A lot of people use that new effect, it's going working like a copy machine, almost like a printer. Instead of going and working all over the place and it really, really works when you get used to it. Um, like your, your, your brain adopts better to see what you can get on shades and where they lay and what you want to plant instead of working all over the place and you try to create an image. For the eyebrow we used a little dark chocolate. Uh, I was coming up here just to like give it a little darker spot, also by the color, but by the hair, blood red, uh, bright sunshine, everything would become up here, we were working on that, a uh, little some bull's blood in there, which has a little like reddish magenta-ish look to it, so it gives it different elements, and then all the dark spots you see in here are dark chocolate and uh, um, gray washes on top of the pigment, so they're not on the bottom, they're on the top which made it happen that we can make like really crazy shades and you have this light, real light stuff in here which normally if it would work opposite would be gone, it would lay on top of it instead of being behind it. Uh, sometimes you want to have a highlight and then I discovered lately that it's really good and helpful to work with low lights so you go in the opposite way instead of just thinking oh I have to highlight, highlight, highlight a low light can be so much as, as effective as anything else you're going to do and it's really, really helpful. 
Um, we came down here, we used a little bit on the line. Now all the hair has been done with the 15 Magnum. I used it sideways, like when you have it like this, it's in, and I use it, I stand it up, and then I go like this. Uh, you need to be very quick. You need to have a curved Magnum. It's very difficult to do with a straight one because you're gonna go in too deep, and when you pull out, it's gonna go, come out too quick. If you have a curved one, you can go in and you can pull it out, and the natural curve of the needle is gonna help you to get that effect. So it's really, really simple if you get used to it to come up here. Um, we used some lavender on the highlight on the side to give it some more dimension because if not, it would have been just a reddish orangey piece. Uh, would have been pretty 3D, I guess, but this made it really 3D. So this has made it, it gives it another depth, it gives it another light source, it gives it another angle where your eye is gonna pick up um, and it's gonna be like giving you some extras on it. All those shades have been done afterwards. I needed to have some more cheekbones and I needed to have some stuff, so I would, it was top shaded. Nothing has been done before and everything was done with color first. Every darker spot is done afterwards. So we shaded a little bit here, very, very soft, shaded a little bit here, uh, came up here, and then I wanted to enhance it a little bit because the person did not want to have a background to it yet. So I needed to hold it in place. It's a very difficult situation if a tattoo is not done with any black or dark lines around it, that it stays in the spot and it looks really strong. So I used